So let's talk really quickly about the one-way chi-square. And it's called the one-way chi-square because there is only one variable. And so our variable here is season. So we have fall, winter, spring, and summer. So these are just four categories of season or four types of season, but they're all seasons. So that's our one variable. So we have one variable with four categories. So we're gonna do a one-way chi-square and our chi-square is going to compare observed frequencies to expected frequencies. Your observed frequencies are going to be the frequencies that you have based on your data. So based on a, let's say here, a survey. So if I went and asked, uh, here our total sample size, we have an N of 200. So I asked 200 people to tell me what uh, is their favorite season? So I said, what's your favorite season? And this is my data. So out of 200, 40 of them said that they liked fall, 35 said that they liked winter, 60 spring, and 65 summer. And so the first thing that we'll do is state our null and our research hypothesis. Our null hypothesis uh, is just that there's no preference across categories. No preference for any season. Right? That no season is more preferred compared to any other season. Our research hypothesis is that there is a significant preference. Or um, what we could say is that for our null hypothesis, our observed, observed, sorry, equals our expected frequency. So our observed frequencies equal our expected frequencies. So they're the same, they're not significantly different. And for a research hypothesis, it would be that our observed frequencies do not equal our expected frequencies. There's a significant difference between observed and expected frequency. Um, okay, so these are our null and our research hypothesis. So we're testing here to see, um, is there a difference between our observed frequencies and our expected frequencies? So we have our observed frequencies based on the data. What we need to do is determine, well, what is our expected frequency? And this could depend upon kind of the nature of your hypotheses. Um, for us, we're going to say again that the null hypothesis is predicting that there's no preference which means that out of these 200 total people, we should have them um, similarly falling into each of these four seasons, right? So they should be spread evenly across each of the four seasons. And so to get our expected frequencies, we'd look at our total N divided by the number of categories, right? Because we're saying that our total N is going to be spread evenly across all of the categories. So our total N is 200. Our number of categories is four, fall, winter, spring, summer. And so we should have uh, 50 people in each category. So our F expected, we're gonna take this 50 and say it's spread across each of these four groups. So we have 50 for each. And so if we add all of those up, it should equal, again, our total N of 200, right? So we're saying this 200 is spread evenly across each of these four groups. All right, so now we need to determine what is our chi-square value? 
So this is our calculated test statistic, just like we calculated um, a T value and an F value in the previous chapters. Now we're calculating a chi-square value. And so to calculate that, we need to take our observed frequencies minus our expected frequencies. So we would take 40 minus 50. We would take, let me get my calculator. <laughs> we would take 35 minus 50 to get negative 15. We would take 60 minus 50 to give us 10 and 65 minus 50 to give us 15. Now, we're going to take this observed minus expected and square it, right? So this should seem pretty familiar, right? We're subtracting things and then we're squaring it to get rid of these negative signs here. So we're gonna take our negative 10 and square it to get our 100. We're gonna take our 15 and square it to get 225. This should be the same 100. And then again for 15 to 25. All right, now this is, this is what's a little new. So we're used to subtracting, getting our squares. Now we're going to take each of these values and divide by expected frequencies. So divide by Fe, well we already said Fe was 50. So all we're doing is saying 100 divided by 50. Right, so we're going to do that uh, for each of these. I just take um, what we have here in this column and divide by the number in this column, which is the same every time, which is 50. Right, so we say 100 divided by 50 is 2. We know that this is going to be the same thing, right? 100 divided by 50 is going to be 2. So let's take our 225 divided by 50 which gives us 4.5. And this one will be the same thing. 225 divided by 50 is 4.5. And then what I want to do is to sum all of these together. So 2 plus 4.5 plus 2 plus 4.5. About 4.5. Which should give me 13 if I add them all together. So we have 13 for our chi-square value. And then what I want to do is to, just like we've been doing before, to look at a critical values table. So let me pull up our critical value table for chi-square. So this is uh, a new table, but we're using it just the same way that we've used our other tables. And so we'll pull up our chi-square table and let me switch to this. All right, and if you notice, you have several tables here. Uh, we're using the cutoff scores for the chi-square, chi-square distribution. And I starred this one so that you'll know to use this table here. And then, just like we've done before, we want our significance level to be 0 0.05, and then we need to know our degrees of freedom. For us, our degrees of freedom are going to be the number of categories minus one. Right, so we had four categories, uh, winter, fall, winter, spring, summer. We want to subtract one, so our degrees of freedom is going to be three. So we look at three and 0 0.05, so our critical value is 7.815. So let me go back. And our critical 7.815. So then we have to ask, okay, is it significant? Well, our calculated chi-square is larger than the critical value from the table. And so just like before, if that's the case, and we say yes, it is significant, it's larger than the value from the table, what we calculated. And so our decision every time, if we say it's significant, then our decision has to be to reject the null. 
And so what that means is that we're saying that there is a preference for, um, for season. So our observed frequencies do not match our expected frequencies, which was based on an even um, distribution of preferences across all of these four categories. Um, they're not evenly spread here. Now, what's kind of tricky about this is that we are saying that there is a preference. Uh, we don't know exactly. We kind of just have to eyeball right, the data to say, well, um, it seems to be the case that people prefer summer more than what we would expect based on the null hypothesis. And they prefer winter significantly less, it seems, than, than what we would expect based on the null hypothesis. Um, but we haven't actually statistically tested that. We're just kind of eyeballing it. Instead, all that we know for sure is that these observed frequencies are significantly different from the expected frequencies kind of overall um, globally. All right.